Welcome everyone back to a weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to concentrate on the latest on the heat wave and also the breakdown from this heat wave. All of the hype recently has been on this intense heat, rightly so as it's likely now today we do smash our all time temperature record and exceed 40 degrees. But we also have to look at the breakdown and we are likely to see some quite severe thunderstorms for some breaking out over the course of this evening and into tomorrow. So in this video, we will concentrate mainly on what's going to be happening over the next few days and the next few weeks, looking at the various short range models at the precipitation, looking at temperatures, and of course, looking at the pressure charts and the ensembles. We'll also touch on the current temperatures as I'm recording this around half 11. So we've got the 11 a.m. observations in, uh, and I'll probably put a video out around 5, 6 p.m. this evening, have a look at the uh, highest sort of observations of the day. And I do think we will exceed 40 degrees. Again, I don't want to do this video too late in the day, um, so we'll post, post another video later if you are interested in seeing what exact temperatures we have uh, peaked at. So, do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in description. So, if we do start on the live radar, you can see we do have plenty of dry weather across a lot of England and Wales, but across Scotland, Northern Ireland, Royal Hubble of Ireland, and southwestern parts of England and southern parts of Wales, we have showers and some intense thunderstorms breaking out. This is a cold front sweeping in with a low pressure system, and we've got intense hot dry air to its east, moist Atlantic air to the west. Now, the air coming in behind it is not cold. It's about 15 degrees at 850 HPA, but considering the air over central England at the moment is 25 degrees at 850 HPA, it is quite a big temperature contrast, and it is going to produce some big thunderstorms over the next 24 to 36 hours. Now, we do have a yellow warning in force for eastern parts of uh, England into southeast England and central parts as well for tomorrow afternoon. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. But at the moment, we do have some intense thunderstorms going off across parts of southwest England. So some images from Cornwall earlier where we saw some intense uh, lightning activity. And we're starting to see these storms break out in Wales, across Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and Scotland as well. So we are likely to see intense heat across England today. But Wales, southwest England, it's likely the temperatures peaked yesterday as well for Northern Ireland, Ireland and Scotland as well. We could still in southern Scotland still reach maybe the low to mid 30s and again we'll have to look at those observations later but at the moment the hottest temperatures as I said are in central England. Now this is around half 11 and you can see these pinks intense heat temperatures up into the mid 30s. We'll have a look at those live observations and it is ridiculous at the moment but you can see to our west, much cooler air, big temperature contrast from the top tips of Cornwall all the way towards sort of Birmingham, Birmingham, Oxford, perhaps a 10 to 15 degree temperature contrast. And that is what is fueling these storms. And this cold front will be slowly progressing westwards. So if you are in the West Midlands, Northwest England, towards Liverpool, down towards Southampton, Oxford, Cardiff, these areas will start to see precipitation through the afternoon. So the temperatures here most likely will peak around 1 or 2 p.m. And that's why we think the bullseye area for the temperatures are from London, East Anglia, the East Midlands, up towards Northeast England and Yorkshire, where we are likely to break 38, 39, most likely 40 into the low 40s now. So if we do have a look at those live observations, these are today's maximum temperatures so far. Again, as I said in yesterday's video, we also have to take these with a pinch of salt because net weather does pick up on a lot of observations, a lot of weather stations, but not every single one. For example, Kew Gardens is not on here, and I've seen from the Met Office tweets, many of you may have seen already as well, that Kew Gardens is one of the top five at the moment as well, in around that 36, 37 degree mark. So of course, this gives us a rough generalization of the temperatures at the moment, but it's not going to give us a specific temperature. We'll have to wait until this evening, until the official Met Office posts uh, about it. Um, but at the moment, you can see widely temperatures are 35 to 37 degrees at 10 and 11 a.m. Again, as I said, some stations don't uh, report every hour. Uh, some stations we won't find out till tomorrow. So these are just the rough uh, sort of guidelines at the moment and you can see many areas at 10, uh, 10 and 11 o'clock this morning around 35 to 37 degrees the high of yesterday 
for many. So we're sort of three or four hours ahead of yesterday. Now, we're not going to continue rising at sort of two or three degrees an hour like we have this morning, but it's pretty much guaranteed now we break 38.7 degrees, our all-time temperature record, somewhere. Today, we always did have a bit of a risk of some showers, some cloud bubbling up, but it's highly likely we do break that. We do smash that now uh, because we're not going to see cloud and showers bubble up everywhere. And you can already see so many areas, areas have got such a high base at the moment. Another thing we did break the all time uh, low last night. We stayed about 25.8 degrees. So beating our all time um, highest low by almost two degrees. So exceptionally hot temperatures last night, where temperatures hardly dropped below sort of 21 to 23 degrees. A tropical night for many, where tropical night means 20 degrees or above as our lowest temperature from 9 a.m. Uh, to 9 a.m. the following day. So intense heat, but luckily, as we'll see in a minute, it is breaking down over the next 24 hours. So yeah, 37.3 degrees, 1.4 degrees away now from the highest temperature uh, ever recorded, um, but I, uh, I and I do believe within the next couple of hours we will break it around 3 to 5 p.m. We could be peaking around that 40 to 42 degree mark, anywhere within that range, I think is the most likely thing now. So just wait for the video this evening where we'll have a look at that in detail. So if you do look at the weather warnings, of course, we have our red and our amber warning for extreme heat. And this video, I'm not going to be covering that because we've been covering every single video for the last sort of five days or so, these warnings. And I think everyone knows the risks at the moment. But yeah, truly exceptional. We've got a, another red warning in force this year now for extreme heat. But tomorrow we have a yellow thunderstorm warning. As I said, through central England, east Midlands, east Anglia, into London, central, southern and southeastern England. Heavy showers and thunderstorms may bring disruption during Wednesday afternoon from 1pm until 9pm. If you have a look at the further details, heavy showers and thunderstorms are expected to develop across central, southern and eastern parts of England on Wednesday afternoon. While most places will see only small amounts of rain, there is the chance of some isolated heavy downpours and lightning. Where these occur, a few sites could see 20 to 30 millimetres an hour and 50 millimetres in three hours. So there's big uncertainty with it, you can see on the impact matrix, low likelihood, high impact. So as we'll see with the models in a minute, they're not really pinpointing that well uh, where exactly we are going to see these storms break out. We've got a lot of energy in the atmosphere, but not too much of a trigger. So yeah, we'll just have to see exactly how it does break down. But at this stage, it's looking highly likely we see rain, most likely heavy showers and isolated thunderstorms. And where those thunderstorms do occur, they could be of high impact. So if we do have a look at the UKV, now looking at the precipitation and we'll also have a look at the temperature, this is from the 3 o'clock run this morning, and you can see those heavy showers and thunderstorms breaking out in the southwest, so as we saw on the live radar, they're a lot more intense in reality than this UKV is raking, making them out to be, so we have to always keep that in mind for the later charts, and you can see of course this afternoon, a few heavy thundery showers breaking off out across northwest England towards Liverpool, Manchester, into Yorkshire as well, some very intense thunderstorms breaking out there, and that could prohibit temperatures in the northeast. So, yes, that's why I said in northern areas across northwest England, western parts of the Midlands, southwest England, we could see the temperatures peak around 1 or 2 p.m. before these heavy showers and storms break out. Now, those showers and storms will continue moving eastwards, and over the course of this evening, around 7 8 p.m., we could see this weather front move through eastern areas. The intensity of the rain along it is still very uncertain. You can see here it's pretty intense in some patches, but other areas it's just cloud, so we'll just have to see how that does play out. But it is bringing cooler air in, which is the good thing. So tonight it should be cooler, not cold, still pretty warm, high teens, perhaps low 20s for some, but not quite as warm as last night. Now into tomorrow we do see nothing too much in the morning before in the afternoon some big thunderstorms break out. Some intense showers potentially in the southeast and you can see those darker reds showing some quite intense cells there again in that yellow warning zone. As we move beyond that we can see through Thursday nothing too much going on. Thursday pretty nice pleasant day and cooler. Yes temperatures are still going to be warm but nowhere near as hot as today or even the last few days. And by Friday, some heavier precipitation in the far southeast, some showers around, but generally not too bad. Before Saturday, we do some see some precipitation move into the north, and by Sunday, some heavier precipitation moving in with low pressure, but nothing too bad. 
Now, if you look at the energy of the HPA temperatures, we'll just concentrate on what's happening over the course of this evening, um, as we do, as I said, have that... Um, we do have that weather front moving through. So you can see around 24, 25 degrees at 850 HPA in the eastern half of the country, but it does get swept away, as I said, by around 10 to 15 degrees at 850 HPA. So by the early hours of Wednesday, some areas in the Far East are hanging on to that intense air mass, but many areas back down to the mid to low teens, which is still very warm, still almost reaching heat wave threshold upper air mass. Air mass. But it's nowhere near as hot as we have at the moment. 10 degree temperature drop. So if you have a look at those max temperatures at the surface, you can see today UKV is forecasting 40 to 42 degrees. And you can see across northwest England, those temperatures have peaked around 1, 2 p.m., around that 38 to 40 degree mark. So if you are in northwest England, towards Liverpool, Manchester, even down towards Birmingham area, just generally in the western side of northern England and in the Midlands as well, even down into sort of Oxfordshire as well, westwards of that, it's like your temperatures will peak around 1 or 2 p.m., around that high 30s. So unlikely to get to around that 41, 42 degree mark, but still could smash all-time temperature records regionally and could reach still reach 39, maybe 40 degrees in isolated areas. But we've got cooler air mass sweeping through, so it should be back down to the low 30s, maybe mid 30s by around 4 or 5 p.m. where temperatures are peaking further eastwards. So from this UKV run, just because the air mass is moving in, because of precipitation moving in, we could see our peak temperatures around 3 or 4 p.m., maybe an hour earlier than we normally would get it, around 4 or 5 p.m. So it could inhibit those temperatures peaking a little bit, but I still do think, and as you can see by this, we will smash 40 degrees. As we move beyond that, you can see this evening those temperatures will slowly move away in the London area, will still be around that 30 degrees, but by around 33 a.m., we're all back down into the high teens, maybe low 20s, no mid 20s tonight. And by sort of 9 a.m., where today it was low 30s, we're mid to low 20s, so much more pleasant. And by the afternoon, temperatures may be peaking 30 degrees in East Anglia, but widely mid to high 20s. Much, much more pleasant. Still very warm, very nice, but much more pleasant. And by Thursday afternoon, we're going to see temperatures back into the mid 20s. Could be a really nice day there. Warm, but not oppressively hot. Similar on Friday, back into the mid 20s for many. Maybe a little bit cooler in the far southeast with precipitation. And by Saturday, again mid to high 20s for some so still very warm could be setting up an intensely hot cet for july and we'll review that in the next couple of weeks uh, which is the average temperature for the month overall um, so very warm still good few degrees above average but nothing as intense as we have now so if you do look at the arpege just have a look at the precipitation charts from this arpege run see what it is showing so you can see uh we have got precipitation moving in over the course of this morning and it's the afternoon you can see a little bit not as well made out in the arpair so a little bit underdoing it perhaps you can see a few showers breaking out across northern england but we do see those heavier showers break out tomorrow afternoon across northern england and southeast england as well so you can see by a differing view here from the arpair and that's why we've got uncertainty with that weather warning and that's why we're a little bit like we don't exactly know where these showers are going to break out but they're going to break out somewhere that's what we can say for certain Beyond that, through Thursday, things are drying up, and through Friday, things should be a little bit better, but a few showers across central areas. If we have a look at the DWD icon run, um, you can see heavy showers breaking across the southwest of England at the moment. It should progress eastwards, and nothing too much from the icon this evening. Interesting seeing that. Before we do see more intense showers break out tomorrow again. Intensity, very uncertain with it. Still got a lot of precipitation around, but it's exact intensity not completely decided here before it does turn dry through Thursday, a bit dry through Friday, but still some heavier showers in northern England and the far south before we do see a weather front move in for Saturday. Could give quite a soaking for northern and western areas, and I know a lot of areas will need that rain. So it does look like we will be seeing intense thunderstorms for some over the next 24 to 36 hours, but there's no intense multi-celled systems likely. It's likely to be pop-up storms, lines of storms moving through quite quickly. So we could see quite heavy rain in places. We could see very little rain in a few places. So just be prepared to see some heavy rain and some thundery weather. I know a lot of people probably would really like some thundery weather more than normal right now. Even people who hate thunderstorms would probably love to see one pass nearby just to cool that air down and give it a bit of rain for the gardens and general um, nature out there. So 
Hopefully we do see a line of showers and storms move through soon. Most areas do see some precipitation, but we do hope at the same time they're not too intense so they don't produce any major disturbances. So if we do now just have a look at the longer range, if we do start on the GFS, one thing that we haven't picked up on really the last few days because we have been concentrating on the heat is that we can actually see a bit of resurgence of heat, perhaps in around a week's time. So have a look at that. That may be something we do look at quite a lot over the next few days. Doesn't look like it's going to get towards 40 degrees, but could get back towards the low 30s again in around a week's time. So, low pressure running in at the moment, high pressure moving back in, turning things much drier through Thursday and Friday, but a little low pressure in the south could give precipitation there for another low moves in for Saturday, and that's giving intense rain for some in the north. Beyond that, as we head towards next week, we do start to build a warmer air mass up from the south again, and that's where we could see return to low 30s. Again, if we have a look at those upper air temperatures, you can see that 15 degree ice firm getting very close by in around a week's time so around sunday monday next week could see that 15 degree ice firm just poking in the far southeast could give temperatures back into the low 30s again if we do zoom in on the united kingdom look and have a look at the two meter temperatures you can see 31 32 degrees widely across eastern england there so nowhere near as hot as now five degrees cooler five to ten degrees cooler than now but still quite hot still heat wave thresholds uh, again I wouldn't expect an amber, amber heat warning in force for this, but it would still be pretty hot. Still could be disruptive, so please do keep an eye on this, and we will be covering this a lot more in the next day or two once we get the heat out at the moment out of the way and the thunderstorms tomorrow. So if we do go out to the European look and continue running through, see low pressure eventually sweeps through, and in the longer term, we do generally start to go uh start to go a little bit uh more westly um and then we could see high pressure building in right at the end of the line again out of 300 hours we've got a bit of uncertainty there because um yeah it is in the longer range but there is still intense heat towards our south that we could tap into at very short notice so we do need to keep an eye on that now, if you have a look at the ensembles, the 6 o'clock run hasn't fully come out yet, but you can see that little peak in upper air temperatures next week, uh, at next weekend into Saturday, Sunday, Monday time. Again, nowhere near as high as this peak we're seeing at the moment, a good almost 10 degrees lower. So instead of 40s, low 40s, most likely low 30s. If you actually do have a look at the midnight run, it'll give us a better sense of the longer term. You can see that very warm air mass moving in. You can see some very, very hot, others much cooler, and generally in the longer term, we're more around average. Some very hot runs again appearing in the longer term, but nothing getting above 20 degrees at 850 HPA. So if anyone says we're seeing a resurgence of the heat in the next couple of weeks, we are seeing resurgence of heat, but nothing compared to what we have at the moment. Just general sort of heat wave conditions that we would typically see a typical summer heat wave of low 30s not the abnormal temperatures we have now of high 30s and low 40s you can see quite a lot of precipitation here but nothing too massive and a lot of small little spikes so no massive weather fronts for at least the southeast most likely further north and westwards and it most likely as i said again will just be convective in nature if you look at the ECMWF ensembles again, you can see the clear little peak around Sunday, Monday next time. Could only last a couple of days, so could see low 30s for a couple of days. And in the longer term, potentially turning warmer again through the last days of the month. But generally around average between that and again, you just look at that peak. Ridiculous upper air temperatures at the moment. And you can see these big spikes coming through Wednesday and Thursday time. That could be those heavy thundery showers moving through as well. And if we do look at the two meter temperatures, you can see intense heat at the moment, high 30s again, they will underdo it because the ensembles. The next few days, back towards the mid to low 20s, most likely peaking around that 25 to 27 degree range for Sunday, Monday. Next week, or later this week, into next week, we could see temperatures back towards 30 degrees, and then in the longer term, back into the mid 20s. So, still looking very warm for the rest of July, very likely to still see heat wave conditions at times but nothing as intense at the moment, and it should be a lot more pleasant out there. But we could, as I said, talking about the CET, be setting up an intensely hot month that we do need to keep an eye on um, for records as well. But we still have a long way to go. We still almost have half the month or a third of the month to go, and we just have to see how it does play out. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you just stay safe out there in the heat this afternoon, evening, and the thunderstorms over the next 24 to 36 hours. And I'll see you again for another video.